Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial and staying on the subject of V-Ray 6 beta being released, I wanted to look into the new Sun, uh, specifically the new procedural cloud system. So in this scene, uh, I've just created a plane and then added the Cosmos preset. So if you go into the preset and then I added the forest preset to it. So that's it for now. Um, so what I wanted to do is try and create like a top of the forest, um, sunset, something kind of, kind of that, kind of like that. So, um, firstly, we need a sun. So let's create a V-Ray sun. We can do that by just dragging something like this. And it asks if we want to automatically add the V-Ray sky environment map. And I'll just select yes. And then I'll go into, uh, and create a dome light. And I'll go into my environments and effects where the map is, and I'll apply the map as a texture to our dome line. So next thing is that we need to create a camera. So we'll create a V-Ray camera just from any odd angle. I will go into just to make things a little bit easier because I might be create a new camera as well, but this just makes it a lot easier for me to uh, get on V-Ray exposure control. So I will from camera and set it to this camera node. This should make it a lot easier. So if I open up the VFB and start the interactive rendering, we should start seeing, you know, forest. And we do. So just for instance, let's just try and do it from here and see if we can get an angle that we kind of like. Maybe you know, rotating the camera around, trying to get some where we can see everything maybe change the view to something like so we change the camera angle to a custom or the uh, the resolution to something like uh, 800 by uh, 600 press shift f in our viewport to look at the um, Look at the actual um, frame so we see what we're rendering and then we can you know change around with play around with the camera a little bit try and get some foreground while also being able to see maybe a bit of the other things okay so something like that so now we can take the sun and start lowering it and play a little bit around with how it should look and where the sun is on the sky we can uh, change the size multiply a little bit for maybe getting it getting a larger Sun if we want to So it'll be in this general area. We can change around exactly where it is and get something that looks a little bit nice So actually one of the features that got added is um, This new if we press control L so we can get the layers now we actually have a um, proportion guide. So the proportion guide gives us as default rule of thirds, but it can actually get us diagonals and can give us golden ratios and so on. So if I wanted to use the lower thirds, which I am uh, right now, or rule of thirds, sorry, I can start moving stuff around. I can play with my settings to actually get something that I might like in terms of um, composition and try and use that to tell a bit more of a story and get a better composition in our view. So now that we have that on, we can close this away and we can start moving the sun to hit something like maybe this, if we wanted to. Okay, so the next thing would be to add the actual clouds. So what we can do is that we go into the sun node, which is already selected, and we can just simply press clouds on. When we do that, clouds will be added and it'll look fairly nice. This makes it a lot easier to where we don't need to actually get a HDRI map or anything. So from here on, we can play on, we can play with the settings like the density, we can lower it to get fewer clouds, or we can raise it to all the way to like, it goes between zero and one. If you set it at one, we will get very dense clouds and it'll take a bit of time to update. There we go. Um, 
and you know you can see, you can see you can play around with it I'd, I'd probably prefer not having too much uh so something point free maybe um we can play around a bit with the variety variety on it if we wanted to um to get some difference in what we're doing if the variety is lower we should have more of the same kind of clouds um we could up the cirrus amount so the cirrus would be i think it's pronounced cirrus anyway um, we will get these more uh, hazy kind of clouds, uh, which looks kind of cool. At least they add a bit of drama to our uh, to our view. So now we have this cloud, for example, um, almost matching up with the tree right here, which is kind of annoying. Um, so we can offset by meters on X and Y. So if I offset this by 20 meters, uh, this should shift our, uh, let's try on 20 might not be actually enough. Uh, let's try 2000. So yeah, you can see we can shift around what we're doing by just, you know, adding different values to the offset or whatever we wanted to and, and try and see if we can get something that we actually like. So then we have something like the height. The height we can change to get the clouds to get closer to the ground or higher up from the ground to again you know just play around with the settings we have the thickness of the clouds so if we set that to a higher value they should be in theory a lot bigger and more uh, dense it goes up to 3000 by the way i just checked um, we have a thickness of 10 which should make very small clouds so there's you know a lot of Fun things that we can play around with. If you do forget what your settings were, uh, what the default settings were, you can always right-click on the um, on the arrow keys uh, if it's a V-Ray um, added feature. So V-Ray Sun for it, this instance, it'll also always default back to the default value. Whereas if you do it on a plane or something that comes from 3ds Max, it'll always go to the lowest possible number. So usually zero. Um, you can play around with phase uh, X and Y in percentages. This is uh, so that you can shift the clouds from, uh, in theory, from zero to 100%. You can go up to 200, but every zero and 100% is the same. But if I go 10%, it'll be shifted. So actually this should be possible to create loops as far as I understand it at least. Um, so yeah, this uh, this is a cool little feature that'll uh, definitely add some value to our renders and, and make it a lot easier so you don't need to find new um, HDRI maps uh, all the time. So I kind of I kind of dig that. Um, we can obviously uh, add something like a um, aerial perspective to this if we wanted to to get some more depth into our images. So we could uh, lower the visibility range to like 2000. This should, in theory, work. Yeah, so you can add it to like 2000 or even higher or lower, depending on what kind of look you want to uh, go for. You can go into your um, layers and take off the proportionate guide. Obviously right now the sun looks kind of weird because of this uh, aerial perspective. I think if we add the environment rays into it, oh yeah, that'll mess it up. Uh, even with a lower, uh, the lower visibility height and meters might might do the trick for us. So we need to, you know, play around with the settings and see how high it needs to go, depending on 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 what it's set for. So if we wanted like a low uh, kind of fog, we could set it at. Um, you can see it comes from the ground and up uh, because of the atmosphere and height. Uh, so we don't want that to be too high. Otherwise, it'll get above us too much and and it'll look uh, kind of weird like you saw before. So we're gonna add it for like 30 meters or whatever. I think these trees are close to it to 20 meters. Uh, visibility and range would obviously change how much we see um, the um, uh, how, how dense the actual uh, fog will be so that would be um, a nice uh, way to change that we can change the filter color if we wanted to add some other color to it as well um, to make it a little bit more because it does get tinted quite a lot by having the um, sorry by having the um, 
the sun this far down and everything we could add a lens effects to it if you wanted to for the sun just to create you know to make it not as rough as where the actual sun is itself and we can play around a little bit with the intensity maybe add some different kind of effects to it and and really fast actually get a pretty decent looking image for for whatever it's worth right i mean you can always play a little bit around with it if you wanted to add a little bit more um general lighting because this is a you know we're creating a picture against the sun uh we could cheat a little bit and we could take the dome light and we could increase the multiplier of the dome light. However, if we do that, um, let's just take this VFB up again. If we do change the dome light itself, the sky will get more intense because we're seeing the texture through the dome light. But since we also have the texture on our environments and effects rollout here, hotkey is eight, um, we can actually make our dome light invisible. So if we change the dome light to, let's say four in multiplier, we will get a lot more intense sun, but we will be able to see the trees a little bit better. So if we create, if we go into the dome light and make it, um, uh, sorry, we need to go into the options and make it invisible. And thus we will be seeing the background from the background image instead, and then getting a little bit more clear image with everything going on. So yeah, I think this is a pretty neat way to, um, explore having you know a, a little nicer sun for um you know arcvis product visualizations where we want uh an eight, where we would usually use an, an hdri map um, but we can actually create something that creates interesting uh, especially reflections and so on for our environments and not necessarily only just for rendering backgrounds like i am here um but yeah that's it for now so um catch you later bye